Welcome back, Rock Raiders. I'm your host, RR Slugger. Last episode, we added a source of power to our HQ. Now it's time for us to lay the groundwork for our journey to the sea. Today, we're building the docks. This unassuming Rock Raiders building had us stumped in a few places during our reverse engineering process. However, before we dive into that, let's take a look at our first priority in recreating it, the high quality render. In a somewhat unique scenario, this render is actually clear enough to make out some of the seam lines between parts, greatly increasing the amount of accuracy we can hope to achieve here. One of the more striking features of the docks is the clever use of wheels as bumpers, like what you would see on a tugboat. In-game, the docks is strictly used as the training point for sailors and the beam-down location for both of the aquatic vessels. With that being said, the inclusion of this sliding bucket mechanism and unused animations in the game files demonstrate that the building was once intended to allow resources to be moved via sea routes. Just like the tool store and power station before it, the docks rides the line between sturdy, retail-like construction and total jank. <laughs> this one holds up mostly well, though you will definitely notice some elements in the roof are unintuitive to assemble and have certain weak points. Similar to the other in-game models, this does not feel like a retail set that was simply unreleased. This feels like an afterthought constructed out of leftover retail parts, even if some of those parts are of alternate colors. Speaking of, let's talk about this black ladder for a minute. Well, I say this is interesting, isn't it, black ladder? <laughs> this is a detail obscured on the render, but appears within the in-game model. It stands to reason that the texture was just repeated for each side of the walls, while its true home is next to the controls on the dark side of the render. In a similar vein, this extra piston is absent from the render but does appear in-game. Since this is a purely additive change and helps explain the dark grey clip here, I think it was just forgotten about. This yellow 2x2 tile on the bucket mechanism is hinted at within the texture files and is one of the last leaps of faith we had to make in reverse engineering the build. For modern builders, I recommend just using an 8x16 brick for the base of the structure as they are plentiful and offer a cleaner look overall. With that being said, the original design was created with two 8x8s in mind and uses this yellow plate to help hold things together. One by one bricks can sometimes be frustrating to find in dark grey, and you're going to need eight of them here. While there are technically just enough within the Rapid Rider and Tunnel Transport, I recommend looking elsewhere for these. The original wave of Harry Potter sets had a notable supply of them, and wouldn't you know it, it's also a great place to grab an extra 8x16 brick too. With that, let's take a look at our parts list and build.
All told, the docks is a fine addition to the Rock Raiders HQ. I imagine this is a less popular building due to its forgettable role in game. Nonetheless, the model is instantly recognizable. If only there was a version with a little bit more panache. I nicknamed this one the Super Docks. This model is built from an early render of a potential alternate version of the boat launching structure. This model features a more elaborate second level with computer station that might be used for keeping tabs on exploration vessels in the water. On the extended platform is a ramp and staging area for vehicles to load into the cargo carrier. Given the size and layout, this building may have originally been a requirement before utilizing that vessel. Let's get started with the parts list and build. Overall, this build is significantly flimsier than its smaller cousin, though I have to say I far prefer this main structure to the one that saw inclusion in-game. As interesting as the idea of a cargo loading mechanism is, the result we see here feels underwhelming and requires some awkward micromanagement and fudging of the peace tolerances to function as intended. Sometimes play features just feel bad to use, and I think this one falls into that bucket. Regardless whichever dock model you decide to build, I think they will serve as a recognizable port for your Rock Raiders Seacraft. With that, it's time to upgrade our power station. Next time we will be taking a look at the much requested source of sandwiches. I hope to see you then. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for some more high adventure, deep underground.